Hi, everyone. This is Meredith. Welcome to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific for the past eight years. The purpose of this call is to teach you both skills and principles that you can apply to your business and everyday life. Although Ramasio had extreme success in network marketing, doing over $2 billion in sales with over 750,000 people in his network, God told him to set forth on a new path, which was in commodities, trade, and finance. Because Ramasio had no one to learn from in this new field, he was forced to lean 100% on God. He dove into the Word, and Ramasio's strong faith and belief got him through his trials and tribulations in this new career, allowing him to achieve great success yet again. Ramasio is here on this call today to do what he does best, to follow God's instructions and to teach people from his own experiences how faith and being obedient to God can take you places you would have never imagined. I recommend that you grab a pen and pencil and get somewhere quiet so you can focus on Ramasio, what, what Ramasio teaches today. Without further ado, let me get out of your way and introduce your millionaire mentor, Ramasio Fulcher. Are you there? Absolutely, I'm here. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you so much for being our host here today. We really appreciate you doing what you always do, which is stepping up and serving the big team. I want to welcome each and every single one of you guys back again for another edition of the Sunday Keep It Pro training call. Many of you may or may not know that eight years we've been doing this call every single Sunday, same time, same number. Uh, there's two specific focuses that you can anticipate to learn from being a part of this call. Number one, we teach you the specific skills that you need to get yourself to the very top of whatever business it is that you may be promoted. Some of you may say, well, wait, I don't own a business. I don't work at a business. Regardless, you yourself, it's called you incorporated. You are a business. So whether you work for a company, small company, large company, or no company at all, we're still going to teach you the skills you need to get yourself to the very top of whatever you're promoting. Always remember in life you need skills to make it up the hill. Second thing that we teach is we also teach life skills, better known as faith-based principles, because what we have found is that if all you have is skills and no wisdom, you're going to be one skillful fool. <laughs> Let me say it again. If all you have is a, a bunch of skills but no wisdom, wisdom meaning knowing when to use the right skill, knowing what degree to use the skill, knowing the timing. All of, those, all of those elements are a part of what we call wisdom. Please do not forget Solomon. Solomon was the wealthiest man to ever walk the face of the earth. The reason why he was so wealthy and no one, including Elon Musk, could come close to his actual wealth was because he prayed to God for one thing and one thing only, and that was wisdom. And with that wisdom, again, knowing when, how, what degree, and all the other variances about wisdom, that is what created such great wealth with him. So on this call, we teach two things, specific skills, and we also teach life skills, better known as faith-based principles. This is what we've done. This is what we're going to continue to do. Now, the cool thing about this call, we've never charged and we never will. People say, well, how come you don't do a podcast? I really don't know the answer to that. All I can tell you is I'm the type of guy that, I typically watch what the masses of people do, and I generally do the opposite. <laughs> I'm not typically a follower, not that I put down podcasting. I have many friends that do podcasting, and it works for them. They're able to get their messages out. It lives on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Some of them monetize it and make fortunes, and I'm so, 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 so happy for them. However, one thing about a podcast, you've got to be stationary. And if you know anything about me, I'm always on the move, right? So I like the conference call setup. I don't know what it is, man. I just like it. I like being able to do what we do in the way that we do it. Some of you may call it old-fashioned. Call it whatever you want. My goal here for this call was not to use this as a platform to contribute to my wealth. This is not a platform that I, I, I'm looking to get more subscribers to come to my channel. I, was only, I only do this for one reason. It's not to be famous. It's only to be effective, to be effective, to be effective, to be effective. And what do we mean by being effective? Listen, we've never asked anything of you except there is one thing in particular that we ask of all of you. We want you to subscribe 
to mentally subscribe to the philosophy, to the principle that this call is done under. I'm going to share with you what that principle, what that philosophy is. I'd like for you to write it down. If we never see each other, if we never speak again, it's important that you get this. Eight years we've been doing this, one specific message. Yes, we have hundreds of phone calls and conference calls that we've done, but there's one overarching message that we want every single soul to capture. We want all of you to get this, not just hear it, but we want you to live by it, apply it, put it in your life. You'll see. You'll see the monstrosity of difference that will come in your life as a result of you subscribing to this philosophy. Are you ready? Do you have a pen? You ready to receive it? It goes. Here's the only thing we ask of you. Write it down. What we make happen for others, God will make it happen for us. Now, let's put your name on it. Let's say it again. What I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. You know, have you, maybe you haven't figured out by now that the way to get to the top, some of you want to, some of you are looking for the girl of your dreams. Oh, oh my gosh, I can feel it. Somebody looking for the girl of his dreams. And some of you women, you looking for the man of your dreams. Now, look. Some of y'all trying to be real cool. I ain't looking for nothing, man. I ain't looking for nothing, man. I got, man, come on. Look, you talking to me. This is the California KID. You know what I'm saying? I'm probably one of, I'm probably one of them, them rare balls in the batch that you're probably not going to fool, right? You're right. I'm probably not the one you're going to be able to fool. So the bottom line is this. Everybody's looking for something. And I want to encourage you and help you get it. How do you get it? Write it down. Another principle, service, service, service is the rent that we pay for the space that we occupy on earth. Service is the way that you climb the ladder. Service, the law of servitude. Would somebody please write that down? The law of servitude. I've got to serve my way to the top. If you want to be in a healthy relationship, if you, let me say it again. Let me say it real nice and slow. If you want to be in a healthy relationship, answer this question. Do I serve my partner? How well do you serve your partner? Oh, come on, boy. We're going somewhere today. You didn't walk into a barn fire. Didn't know it, but you're here now. Service. You want the woman of your dreams? You want the man of your dreams? How well do you serve? Now, look, some of you. Some of you, you're thinking I'm talking about eggs, pancakes, and biscuits. No, that ain't all I'm talking about. But as they say in the reading class, put a little asterisk there, not limited to. (laughs) I'm not just limiting it to eggs, biscuits, and pancakes, but we're talking about servitude. How well do you serve? I'm pausing because I want you to think for a second. How well do you serve? Do you understand, as it relates to gaining more money, that money comes from solving problems? The greater the problem that you solve, the bigger the problem that you solve, the more money that you make. You see, it's not a white thing. It's not a black thing. It's not a Christian thing. It's not a Buddhist thing. It's a principle thing. I'm talking about the law of servitude. Now, some of you are thinking, well, Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. What does serving have to do with me finding the woman of my dreams or the man of my dreams? Write down my answer. You ready? Everything. Everything. And I want you to capitalize the word, eat, to capitalize the word everything and put an, put an exclamation point after it, right? It has everything to do with it. You see, attraction is one uh, of the elements that bring two people together. Attraction. Physical attraction, internal attraction, spiritual attraction. Attraction is one element. But one of the things that keeps people together, one of the things that keeps people together is, are you meeting my needs? Am I meeting your needs? Are we meeting each other's needs? Uh Uh-oh, I didn't step on a nerve. Are we meeting each other's needs? When I was 21, I had a certain amount of needs. When I'm 30, my needs change. When I'm 40, my needs change. When I'm 60, my needs are different. My needs are changing. 
Are you still serving your partner? How well do you serve your partner? See, some of you, some of you don't understand when we talk about serving, do you know how to serve your partner and meet the needs that they don't even know how to say to you what they are? Let me say it again. Do you know how to serve your partner where you're exceeding their expectations? You're doing what it is they would only hope you would do without them having to tell you to do it. Or are you the only person that only serves when somebody asks you for something? I'm not saying that's bad. What I'm trying to show you is different degrees of service. I said money comes from solving problems. The world says this. You solve a problem for me, I'll pay you for the problem. What I'm doing right now is I'm sharing with you, again, the importance of the philosophy that this call is done under. What you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. Again, I'm just giving you example after example of the law of servitude. Perhaps this is the answer to all your problems. While you're sitting there waiting on the manifestation of the dream or the goal or the next level that you're trying to get to, you put your head back down and get back to serving. Now, some of you are saying, but Romancio, I do have a job, and I do exactly what I'm told to do on my job. Good for you. That's one level of service. You do understand that that there's another level to this thing, right? Serving, serving, serving. God asked us of one thing. He asked us to be obedient. And I trust me, I miss the mark all the time. But I strive to try and do a little bit better, 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 do a little bit better. Serving. How can I better serve my fellow man? How can I better serve my child? How can I better serve? How can I answer that question? How can I better serve? Is it always all about me? Or have I finally learned for me to go up, i got to help somebody else go up? Or am I of the thought process about my friends, I only care about my needs? You see, we haven't even gotten into the message here today, and we're already on the fringe of this thing, but it's so good because we're talking about why we never ask you, uh, we never ask you for anything except one thing. We ask you to mentally subscribe to the philosophy that this call is done under, and that is we want you, as of today, this moment, the moment you hear this, we want you to adopt this principle. What I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. It has nothing to do with you being a holy roller. It has nothing to do with that. It's a principle. I'm trying to educate you on a principle that will make a gigantic difference in your life. I understand that when you serve people, you run the risk of getting hurt. It's part of the deal, baby. Write it down. Let me say it again. I understand that when you serve people, you, you, you're, you're, you're being vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable with people, sometimes people can take advantage of you. That's part of the deal. Write it down. It's part of the deal. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you wiser. No two ways to go about it. It's part of the deal. It comes with the program. Okay? Service is what we're talking about here. Serve your way to the top like Joseph did. Serve your way to the top like David did. Serve your way to the top. Serve your way. That's how you get to the top, and that's how you stay on top. How well do you serve is my question. How well do you serve is my question. Do you sit up there as a man and say to yourself, how can I be better for myself? And as a result of me being better for myself, it'll bleed over into my relationship. It'll bleed over into my parenting. It'll bleed over into my job, my business. How can I get better as a man? You want the woman of your dreams? Here you go. Here you go. You want her? That's what you want? You want the woman of your dreams. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you want, man. I know what you want. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I'll pick you up in spirit. I understand what you're saying telepathically. I get what you're saying. I know what you want. I know exactly what you want. Yeah, I'm talking to you. 
all you got to do is go out there and become the best you you can become. All you got to do is go out there and become the best you you can become. Because in the process of you becoming the best you you can become, you're going to understand this word called value. You're going to understand how to become more valuable to your future girlfriend, future wife. You're going to understand how to up your value. You're going to educate yourself not just on what's in the books of life, but you're going to educate yourself in the fields of life. You're going to become versatile instead of being just one-dimensional. You're going to take an interest on how you can be better in a lot of different areas, and at the appointed time, you're going to display better. And as you display better and give better, she's going to be so attracted to you, she won't, she won't know what to do. But say, hey, King, tell me, tell me what you need from me. How can I help you, King? How can I make you better? How can I, how can I rock your world? And this is what she's supposed to do because she's supposed to help you be a better version of yourself and fulfill and fulfill the mandate that's on your life. She's supposed to help you fulfill your purpose here on this planet. But if you don't have a purpose, she ain't got nothing to help. If you don't have a direction, she ain't got nothing to assist. So, again, gentlemen, I don't care what race you are. It it, it works the same. Don't matter what race the woman is. Don't matter. We're talking about a principle, and I'm showing you how this principle will work even in your personal life because we're talking about you providing more value. If some of you think value is having big muscles and a big bank account, that ain't it. That's not it. You know, there's a lot of people out there that literally, honestly, Money is not even their love language. Now, some of them like gifts, and a lot of women like gifts, and that's fine. But a lot of women, sometimes their love language is time. Got all the money in the world, but I just want your time. I just want you, right? You see, so what we're saying here, you want to have this dream life, this amazing life, and you deserve it. What I want you to, to write down on your piece of paper and circle for yourself It all comes from the law of servitude. If you would just master the art of service, even when you don't want to, master the art of service, even when they've done you wrong, master the art of serving, even when you're tired, master the art of how can I give more than I receive? Just, I, I just, if you just took that and we never talked, I'll see you at the top. I'll see you at the top because I know where you're going to end up in life. I know where you're going to be. You're going to be right next to me at the top. And when you're at the top, you're always thinking about how I can provide more value, how I can set this thing up better, how I can offer more to my fellow man or my fellow woman. You're always – you, you don't impress me with how much money you have. You do impress me when you can tell me how many people have you taught to get money as well. I'll say it again. You don't impress me, fancy Rolls Royces, mansions, private jets. Yeah, that's wonderful. Wonderful. That's good for you. Love it. That's wonderful. You do know you're going to die one day, right? You, you know that, right? You do know you're going to die one day. And ain't no jet coming to your funeral. (laughs) Ain't no butler coming to your funeral. (laughs) You can't take that stuff with you. And we're not going to remember all your private jets and your your mansions and all this type of stuff. We're going to remember what did you leave in the earth? Who did you affect? So if you want to impress me, I'm just telling you, what impresses me is when I see how much you've given, when I see who you teaching, who you helping, now I'm going to tip my cap to you. Now I'm excited. Now I'm impressed. Now you caught my attention. Now you're doing something. Okay, so what we're trying to say to you here, this philosophy that we do this call under, and this is the reason why we don't charge. We've never charged in eight years, and we never will. It will always be free. Because why? We plan to give you more than we ever receive back from you. I plan to give you more than I ever get back from you. 
Why do I do that? I just told you. Because we believe what I make happen for you, God is going to make it happen for me. It's all about service. The law of servitude. Write it down. The law of servitude. How can I be better at serving? You don't have to be good at service to get started, but you do have to get started to ever become good at it. So you might as well get started now. And if you want to become really good at service, you have to study the life of Christ. Study faith-based principles, and there you will find the greatest example of love. You'll find the greatest example of service. You'll find the greatest example of serving, even in the face of hypocrisy, even in the face of blasphemy, even in the face of all the stuff that he went through. He still continued to serve his fellow man. And one of the scriptures that I love so dearly is the scripture that says, you may not understand now why I'm doing what I'm doing, but you will understand later. You may not understand now why we're doing what we're doing, but later, my friend, it'll all make sense to you. Later, you'll catch me in spirit why this principle should be the number one principle of your life. Don't be the person that likes, that likes to take from others. Don't be the person that wants unfair exchange where you want something, but you don't want to give anything. Don't be that type of man or woman. Be the type of person that wants to give more than you receive. Why, do, why would you want to do that? Because you can never outgive the giver, the giver of life, Christ. You can never outgive. Stop trying to be the person that wants to keep score. Well, I gave you three. You only gave me one. I gave you, you know, 60%. You gave me 10%. Stop trying to be the person. This ain't a bartering situation. It's not a bartering principle. We're talking about servitude. God sees all that you give. And trust me, he's the only judge, and he will settle the score. I promise you. So I want you to really get this, ladies and gentlemen. This is why I want to encourage you. Tell your friends. Tell your colleagues. Tell your family members. Hey, join in on this free call. Eight years and rolling. Eight years. Right here. Absolutely free. Everything is posted on the YouTube channel, Romacio Fulcher. You can go and listen to it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I encourage you, you should, you should do so. Eight years of this content. Now you tell me, isn't it pretty cool to have a free conference call or a YouTube that you can go and listen to that will aid you, it will assist you, it will confirm in you that you're going the right direction. It also will teach you some things. It will enlighten you on some principles, philosophies that you aren't aware of. And it's all for free. And we're never going to charge you. That's really cool if you ask me. It's really cool. So, guys, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and shift – here for the last remaining few minutes here that we're going to spend on this call. And I know last week we, we had a great call. We talked about tithing. If you're just joining us for this week, I want to encourage you to go back and re-listen to last week's call. It truly was incredible. It is on the YouTube channel. Again, Ramacio Fulcher. You can go there, listen to it at your leisure. I really want to encourage you to do that. Uh, this season that we're in right now, I got to tell you guys, Great things are being manifested right now. This is the year. This is the year of intentional faith and healthy habits. 2024, we've told everybody at the beginning of the year, the year of intentional faith and healthy habits. So it's important if you're going to be here with us uh, on the Sunday calls, I want you to know that each call that we do is intentional. Each topic that we talk about, it is not by mistake. It was not a mistake that we talked about tithing last week. Here we are rounding out the first quarter of the year, so to speak, you know, and we're talking about tithing. That's what we talked about last week. This week, uh, here today, we began our call talking about making sure you understand the law of servitude, the law of servitude. See, this is not a mistake what we're doing here. 
because I know that you want more in your life. I know that you want more. And I know that some of you are thinking that the only way for you to get more is you got to do all these things. And this is where we're going to get into today's topic. Many of us tend to think that I have to do, do, do. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got because that's what the world wants to make us believe. We have to do all of these things. Now, I don't want to minimize the fact that you are going to be responsible for the choices and the actions of your life. That is true. But what I want to teach you today or share with you is what if I were to submit to you that life wasn't about having a long to-do list, but rather it was about having a to-be list. Write this down for me. Being versus doing. B-E to being versus doing. I be, then I'll do. If I be, then I'll do. In other words, if I be a dog, I'm going to act like a dog. If I be a king, I'm going to act like a king. If I be a queen, I'm going to act like a queen. If I be a slave, I'm going to act like a slave. If I be a heathen, I'm going to act like a heathen. See, what I want to turn your attention to today is I want you to put away this long to-do list of all these things you got to do. Let me share with you why, and I know this is going to be tricky for some of y'all. This to-do list that you have is killing you because it's a list that you never finish. It's a list that always keeps growing, and so you never conquer it. This to-do list is exhausting. It just always makes you feel your work is never complete. It's never done because I got more to do. I got more to do. And I'm not saying nor suggesting to live a life of, 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 lo- of lowliness, uh, live a life of just, you know, of just, you know, just doing nothing and having no purpose. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to teach you is for you to carry the load of your life. And the way to do that is if you would focus on being. Focus on being. Write this down. Wherever you go, there you are. I want you to understand that you take you with you into all of your life's circumstances. Listen, I'm going to try and give you a visual aid here. Whoever you are today, if you get into a relationship, that's the person you're going to bring to the relationship. Whoever you are today, if you go do a new business or a new job or whatever it is you do, that's the person that you're going to bring to that new job or that business. If you were to have a child today, whoever you are today, you could only give to your child what it is that you've got, what it is that you know. You can only give who you are. So this is why I want to really draw your attention to the fact that if, if I go everywhere that I go, if I bring myself with me everywhere that I go, and if I really want to change my life, grow my life, shift my life, improve my life, the number one thing I should be focusing on is not what I'm going to go do next. What I should be focusing on is who I'm going to become, who I'm going to be. Oh, boy, I'm going to say this two more times because I don't think you understand it's as big as an elephant, what I just said. Some of you are running around with these long lists, and you've got all these to-do things, and, you're, and, and let me talk to the men first. Oh, I can talk about this one really good. You know, because, you, you see, see, specifically, as a, as a young man and as an adult, Men, we, we, there's a lot of pressure on you as a man. It just is. It's just the way life is set up. It's pressure for you to, to be this and do that and blah, blah, blah. I mean, just think about it. I mean, if you don't become nothing in life, then basically nobody wants you. If, you. if you don't become anything in life, then basically nobody wants you. You're rejected everywhere you go. You're rejected amongst your peers. You're rejected, you're rejected amongst the ladies. You're, you're just rejected. So there's a lot of pressure. It's just the truth that comes with being a man. It just does. 
And so with that pressure, some of us as men, we don't know how to handle that pressure, so we become overly mechanical and we become, it's all about what I'm doing. It's all about I got to go do this. I got to go do that. I got to go do whoever can do the most, he's the top dog. Whoever does the most, whoever has the big muscles, he's the top dog. Whoever's at the top, whoever's at the top, he's the one. He's the one. So it becomes this competitive uh, energy that is, is all displayed through I got to do all these things. Most men are very, very, very mechanical. We, we tend to walk around, and our predominant thought in our minds as men is, what do I have to do to get X, Y, and Z? That is the predominant thought of all men. If the baby's crying, oh, my God, what do I got to do to make the baby stop crying? If the woman is unhappy, oh, my God, what do I got to do to make her happy? If the rent's due, oh, my God, what do I got to do to pay the rent? Oh, my God, what do I got to do to grow the company? What do I got to do to do this? What do I got to do? What do I got to do? What do... Men are very mechanical. They're very mechanical. This is how we work. And although that is necessary for us to go out and do things, the challenge is we end up getting caught up in this vicious cycle of, I got to do all this stuff. I got to never, never, never mind who I am, never mind how I feel. I just got to do, 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 do. And next thing you know, you look around, you got a whole bunch of doo-doo all around you. And what I want to encourage you or shift you is to understanding, again, go back to what I said. If I be, then I'll do. So now if you can take the pressure off of having to actually do all the time, and, 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 and if you focus on becoming more, as you become more, it's a part of you, and it's easy for you to give more or to do more because that's just who you are. Let me give you an example. Give you an example. This call or this what I'm doing, it's not hard for me to do it because it's who I am even if we did not do this call. I'm a giver. I'm a leader. I'm an abundant thinker. So it's not hard for me to do this. I don't, oh, my God, I got to go do this call. Oh, my goodness, I don't know what we're going to do today. Oh, my goodness, it's just, oh, my God, I got to do this call. I don't, that's not, that's not how I look at this at all. I don't look at it that way at all, guys. This is who I am. So that's why I don't need any notes when I do the call. I am the note. Just be me. You see the difference? So now I don't perceive it as this is so difficult for me to do. It's a part of who I am, as opposed to if it was another thing on my list, I got to do this, I got to do that. Man, I got to do all this stuff, man. I just got to do it. And that's why it's so super important for you to catch in the spirit what I'm saying to you, to focus your life on being and becoming versus doing. You know, if I were to talk to you, if you were a young man or a man that, you know, if you think about relationships and all that type of stuff, the way to get the woman of your dreams is to become the dream and you'll attract the woman. That's it. Become the very thing that you desire, and next thing you know, <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get who you are. You're gonna get what you are. Become that. Become a strong person, flexible. Become a person, you know, that's courageous, here. Not a follower. You know, become a person, you know, that's kind, but also firm. <laughs> become the lion and the lamb, baby. Come on. Come on. Become the lion and the lamb, right? Become the very thing that you desire, and it will show up in your life in short, in short order. It will show up in your life right away. Become that. Become that. Become that. Become that. You know, it was said that if you don't like it, in line with what you're getting, maybe you should check what it is that you're giving. Become the person that takes responsibility, holds himself or, her, or herself accountable in, in, in life. Become a person who's not full of a lot of excuses. I said what I meant, and I meant what I said. Become that type of person who stands on the courage of their convictions 
become a person who's about getting 1% better each day in life. Become the type of person who's about making progress versus regress. Become the person that prays all the time. Become a person who seeks after more wisdom, for only a fool thinks he knows everything, but a wise man thinks he knows nothing because there's so much more to learn. Become the type of person who's attracted to growth and abundant mindset people. Become the type of person that likes to be the person who's the least wealthiest in the room, the, the, the dumbest person in the room because he knows he's in the right room because he or she knows that they're growing. Become kind-hearted. Become a giver. Become a tither. Become fearless. Become that. Are you getting what we're saying today? World, can you hear me out there? Become the very thing that you desire. And I promise you, if you will do that, everything that you've ever desired, it will automatically draw itself to you. It will draw itself to you. You will just walk right into it. OMG. How did I get all this? Oh, oh, because I am all this. I, I'm, this, is, this is all a function of who I am. So I'm merely attracting the very thing that I'm about. My, my God, my God, what a beautiful world. So I know that those of you that are really paying attention to this call, this message this message about being versus doing is very profound for you. It's very profound for you. But if I just, if I just keep it simple and I just keep becoming more, I just keep striving to be better, and I really mean better, and let me tell you something. You can't get better without falling down. You can't get better without getting it wrong and making mistakes. You can't get better without screwing it up. Hello, ladies, are you listening to me? You can't get better. He won't get better without making mistakes. He won't get better without messing it up. That's part of getting better. But as long as you're striving to become more, you now have more to give. And when you have more to give, automatically you end up doing more because you realize you are more. And you understand the principle that to whom much is given, much is required. So if I'm becoming more, then I have to give more. If I'm becoming more, I have more to give. If I'm becoming more, I've got to serve more. Because if I don't do it, I don't know who will. If I don't step up and take up my space in the world and do what I'm supposed to do, then I don't know who will. Because can't nobody do me the way that I can do me. Can't nobody give me the way that I can give me. Do you understand? How it all centers around, as you become more, you have more to give. And let me make it real plain and simple to you. Life is not about what you get. Real life is about what you contribute. It's about what you give. Let me say it again, just in case you didn't hear me. Life is not about your new Fendi bag. Life is not about your new, uh, Bir- your new, Bir- your new Birkin bag. Life is not about, oh, you in the Maldives this week. Life is not just about, you know, you, cl- you climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. You got a brand new Ferrari. You got a brand new mansion or a brand new baby. Let me tell you real clear concise what life is about. Life is about what you contribute. Because the Bible says you ain't nothing but a blink of an eye. It goes by quicker than you think. But what did you contribute? What did you contribute? What did you contribute? And the only way you can give more is if you become more. 
That's why your focus should be who am I becoming versus what am I doing? Who am I becoming? Who am I becoming? What type of woman am I becoming? What type of man am I becoming? What type of mother am I becoming? What type of father am I becoming? What type of believer am I becoming? What type of example am I becoming? This call today is about who are you becoming? Becoming. Becoming. Every adversity in your life that you go through, every adversity carries with it an equal seed of success. Every adversity that you go through, every, I don't care if it's relationship, business, health, every, 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 I said every, every adversity, no matter what it is that you go through, carries with it an, an equal, equivalent seed of success. You have to find the seed. In other words, is this the end because of what's happening to me, or is this the beginning? Is life happening to me, or did life happen for me? Come on, somebody. Did this happen, this divorce, did this to me? Did this rejection happen to me? Did this lack of promotion happen to me? Did this delay happen to me, or did this delay happen for me? In other words, had it not been for the divorce, had it not been for the delay, had it not been for this, had it not been for that, it would have never prompted me, caused me, moved me to becoming more. And because of that, I became more. Now I have more to give. And as a result of me giving more, I'm contributing more, I'm feeling better, I'm doing better, and I'm attracting better. So again, life is not about what you get. But life is about what you give. And remember this, if we never talk again, you can only give what you've got. You can only give who you are. You can't give what you ain't, and you can't give what you ain't got. So it makes the focus, how can I become better? How can I become better? And if you just focus your heart on servitude, servitude, servitude. Woo! I get excited about that because I understand what it means. How can I serve them better? How can I serve them better? If you really get serious about serving, I'm talking about. I'm talking about serious. Not just. I'm talking about what you. You put your whole back into that thing. I'm talking about. Let me serve you, man. Let me serve you, world. Let me. Let me show you how I do it. Can't nobody do it how I do it. I put that extra on it. Extra, extra. That's right. I put that extra on that thing. And when I put that extra on it, whoo, can't nobody do it like that. And see, the world loves it when you provide a great service. They love it when you provide great service. Your kids love it when you provide great service. Your boyfriend loves it when you provide great service. Your husband loves it when you provide great service. Your wife loves it when, she, when you provide great service. Oh, my God. Woo! This boy know how to serve. Understand, it's all about servitude. Guys, I love you guys dearly. I'm the California kid. Always remember, in all that you do, there's nobody in the entire world any greater than you. Go out there and become more. It's about who you become, not necessarily what you do. If I be, I will do. Who are you becoming? I love you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.